Not yet. I will see it now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm here to cover up uh, the how to perform from home, right? Like a working home, um, like a kit for you. Like it's not hacks. It's all about the your kind of health and your safety. How you deal uh, with the psychology of working from home. So, but first of all, let's start with a question. You know. So, uh, who work uh, who work from home and for how long? Like literally, yeah, I know that everybody is working right now for the last week. If you're working only for one week, type it in. You know, go for one week. If uh, you are working uh, uh, work for five years, you know, please give it down right now in the comments. We want to know how much people are and what are your experiences experiences in working from home. Okay, so we have a, a few seconds delay, uh, but we're going to start yeah. hearing, uh, seeing the uh, the comments. And a few guys, if you're working from home, who's working from home? Say hi. Let's put. Let's make you famous. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a bit of an echo. Okay, Donata. Um, she is. Oh, it's so hard to see now because it's white. Um, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we got two weeks. Two weeks, and we two got years, Sardas. five years. There's 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 a mix, right? There's a, a lot of different people, right? What yes. I see. So yeah. Um, so question number two, right? So question number one, not question number two. Who worked uh, from home with children? Meaning that you work with a with a dude or a gal, you know, depending. And uh, you, know, you all day you're trying to kind of, uh, you know, set up the boundaries and, you know, work on your stuff. You know, how much people? <clears throat> okay, I see some comments here. Working from home for seven years and... Okay, um, that's an experience, dude. Uh, Augustus, <laughs> I'm working on my shit right now. It's too bad <laughs> that, like, we have a white background, but... Um, yeah. yeah. But we can see, okay. But like, Elan is saying yes. One year with a kid. No, yeah. And, I've, and uh, Shoshana says I've been working over ten years. Two kids and a spouse. Greta. Okay. Uh, Ashra is two, two, two children and seven and five years old. Four people in one room. That's amazing. Okay. Ashra. That's that's amazing. That's that's kind of three kids. Uh, <laughs> that's Optimus almost. Prime in, in working from home. I could say that. <laughs> okay. So another, the third question will be who worked from bed. You know, I'm not saying that um, literally. You know, like when you are going to sleep and you are still with your laptop and you're trying to accomplish your task or your project and you are working from your bed. You know, in the next 10 minutes, you will just shut it down and you will go to sleep. Who worked from bed? Okay, okay we're going to wait a few seconds for the answers to come in. Uh, I'm in bed. Uh, okay, Muriel, three weeks, first week. Okay. Um, by the way, if you guys, if you guys working, if you guys in bed right now, give us the uh, heart. Show us some heart. That would be yeah, faster. The bed designers, let's collect them. Okay, so uh, what I'm, you know, uh, why I'm doing this talk, you know, this is uh, what uh, struck me. Uh, I, I read this kind of um, uh, subject on the in, in, in the uh, in the in the magazine The Atlantic. So in the magazine The Atlantic, there was a uh, how I should say uh, there was a talk on uh, what will happen when uh, the epidemic will end. So the Ed Young, the dude who writes uh, from the science in this uh, journal, he said that there's going to be a lot of mental health problems and a pandemic of mental health. So uh, for those people who are working uh, from home a lot, uh, you probably know that it's tough. It's psychologically tough. And there are some reasons for it. And uh, for those who are just only starting to work from home, I think that this thing will go for a, for a long, uh, it could go for a long time. So just let's prepare for it. And there are some psychological things which will happen. Okay, so 
uh, my story. So I didn't work for like for 10 years. I, looked, I worked only for five years as a, as a, uh, as a, a UX designer uh, for uh, portals like Upwork, TopTile, Behance, and uh, uh, for like for five years. And like I worked for 20 hours a day with no weekends. And that was a hard, uh, that was a hard time. As a result, I got a burnout, a really kind of damn burnout when you cannot work. So like I was sitting only for two weeks uh, watching just uh, just watching wall, right? I could not do anything. I was paralyzed. So in order to get through that, I needed to go to a psychologist when I went through the type ther therapy course. And this is when I started redesigning my life around working from home. I designed my own home office. And uh, then in like in three years, I came back to the uh, came back to home. Uh, not to home, to, to the office, to the corporation, uh, working in a big building uh, because of some strong reasons for it. So working from home is not a joke. It can become a burnout. And uh, for a lot of people that are here, I don't want to, for that to happen. So the main cause why this happened is because we as humans, we ignore our mental needs when we are scared. So there's a thing is that when I was uh, constantly trying to make a book uh, as a freelancer. Uh, so I was fa constantly facing uncertainty and I was constantly scared. And this is when I have ignored a lot of my kind of needs. And this rolled out to a, a really, really big depression for me. So literally when you have an office today, right? Uh, what it is. So when you went to an office, to your corporation, to your team, the thing is that your office and your job is uh, is designed okay it's uh, your uh, your uh, paying is organized so you get a check every month that is really really important you feel safe because of that and uh, and uh, you have a healthy boundaries in place so you got it you get in at eight o'clock you go out at you know at five o'clock or you go in at ten o'clock and go out at seven o'clock still you have the boundary be between home and between your job. That's why you are so efficient operating at your work. And that's why sometimes we suck when we are operating from our home. So also another thing which is super important is you are provided by the feedback from the senior designers or your product owners or your team or your users every day. So, uh, and uh, that's a good office by definition. So if you had all these, and you don't have them today, that's when you will have problems soon. So, and uh, when I went to psychologist and through my therapy, I have came out with this 5S self-care system. So I based this self-care system on a Maslow pyramid. So everybody know uh, uh, psychologist Maslow. So he created a uh, hierarchy of our psychological needs. So, and uh, by, Having that system, well, we together with my wife created our own our home office, right? Our kind of safe space when you can just come in and you can work on your stuff for eight or seven hours. So uh, yes, working from home, I was not working by the beach and uh, with the kids. Reality is you need to have a kind of safe place to work in. So the first S, you know, uh, the first S is the shelter. Right. So let's take it like this. Like there's a um, uh, you need to take care of your mental, healthy uh, psyche. Right. So you need to sleep, at, you know, like literally put on time or sleep for eight hours. Uh, it doesn't matter how much deadlines you are missing. You need to sleep out. You know, like we have this so many, uh, so many informations that you only need to sleep six hours. Yeah, I did that for four years. I, I, I you know, I went out with a burnout. So go out and sleep, do the pull-ups, do the push-ups. You have so much uh, apps on your phone today, you know, like night training, night training club, install it, do the, uh, the fitness thing, uh, drink water. You know, uh, that is quite important, especially where you are, when you are under fear, when you have uncertain times, drink a lot of water that helps you to deal with panics. Another thing is have an office chair, really good office chair. Your kitchen chair suck. It doesn't work, okay? Uh, if your sofa doesn't work, if you do not have an office chair, uh, go to the IKEA website, 
buy one. You know, that's really worked for me. Like, it's uh, all these things are uh, are like banal. You know, you think that they're like so cliche, but I needed two years to figure out that I need this. And uh, as fast as as you get this, it's like getting water in the desert. You know, you you need to have these things, and also air. You need the ventilation. Open up windows. Get some fresh air. That's also really important. That helps you to not feel panicked. But only only removing these five things, you will get panicked really fast. You will get uncertain really fast. And it's not about your job, and it's not about your tasks, and it's not about your relationships. Just removing these five will make you scared and uh, uh, will make you inefficient big time. When you are working in office, all of these things are provided. Right. We, even when you're going to your office and you commit commute for t- 30 minutes, you are already moving. So I myself, I work out not because I want to become a like, a, as I said, you know, a gym, you know, professional. I want to have six pack. Everybody wants to have a six pack, of course. But I work out to be mentally healthy, not because I want to be kind of physically fit. So to be physically fit, you need to work a lot. You know. <laughs> Uh, so another thing is safety, okay? So safety is all about the boundaries. It's all about the boundaries. So uh, like when I was working as a freelancer, I had a steep budget. Uh, so uh, when I created an Excel sheet, when I started creating uh, spendings every month, when I started creating income every month, that really helped me. Uh, when, I, uh, when I start fixating how much talks I have with how much clients, you know, and I just put on checkbox on every client, on every progress. That really helped me to feel safe. Another thing is noise cancel- cancellation headphones. If you are working from home, you have a kid, you have a family, get those. Those helpful are super. Those are super helpful. Like uh, calendar clocks. You know, just uh, put in slots that you will be working for four hours or five hours. Basically, this uh, and put in slots on what days you will be working on what parts. So this is quite important. Why? When you are visiting office, all this is provided by the office. You have the perfect boundaries in the office. They are designed by default, right? But when you are working at your home, that is not provided. That should be created. There's no office manager to create that. There's no uh, general manager to create that. So you need to take care of that of yourself. Uh, so I have a calendar over here on my wall. I uh, I uh, mark every sprint, so I work in sprints. You know, every two weeks there's a sprint. So if you are working in an, an agile uh, system, an agile company with uh, product teams in agile, so this is quite easy. This is already provided. If somebody doesn't know what's agile, uh, uh, go and and watch what is Scrum, and uh, you need these boundaries to kind of understand where to work. Do not work on Saturdays. Do not work on Sundays. Uh, uh, do the uh, working uh, from home responsibly, and uh, uh, that's quite important to not get a burnout. The third as social needs. So I would like provide the social needs as a uh, as a, as a feedback. Okay, we all need feedback, but we need to mind that there's three types of feedback. There's appreciations, there's advice, and then there's a evaluation. So these three are quite, they're super important for us to grow. A lot of freelancers who I see, and as me as a freelancer, uh, the reason why I went back to the office and to the team is because a certain moment I understand that I do not grow at all as a designer, right? So this is when I understood that I need to go to the office. I need to have a professionals around me. I need the seniors uh, to give me advices, to give me feedback where I am failing, to evaluate my work, because uh, I need uh, juniors uh, to uh, give advice. You know, I need juniors uh, to uh, get appreciations. So social needs are are super important, and that's not only handshakes and hugging. I love hand- handshakes and hugging, even if you don't, if you think that you don't like handshakes and hugging, I still say that you need them as a human, right? But the third need, the social need, is really the feedback which allows us as UX designers to work. So try to, uh, first of all, try to understand what kind of feedback you need. So if you are feeling uncertain, right, in a situation like you are getting hired, right, and 
what you need from your management, you need evaluation at that point, because if you are like, uh, let's put it from, from one to five, if you are doing one or two, probably you will need to find another job. If you are doing three, you will need probably to work on your skills and get a little bit better. If you're doing five, you're okay, right? But if you are working for the company for 10 years and you know the business better than the, uh, than the owner of the business, probably you will need an appreciation, right? You need, you need to feel, you need somebody to say thank you for the job that you are doing, right? If you are, uh, if you are, uh, if you are creating some kind of prototype of wireframe and you do not know what to do next, right? Probably you do not need evaluation. You know that you suck right now at your point. You need an advice. You need an idea. That's why you have to come to a person who can give you that. So a social need is quite important. And uh, uh, this is where we need to uh, use a lot of our messengers. We need to use our cameras, Zoom. Uh, I see or like from uh, teams uh, that uh, they still do not like to use calls, you know, but uh, we need that as humans. That's not because we want to have a call or a chat. We need a feedback, right? The feedback is vital for engineers. It's vital for UXers. And not only the feedback from the user, also from the team as well. So that's the third need that needs to be covered. The fourth need is the self-esteem. So uh, what's, uh, what is interesting about the self-esteem is about how we feel. So uh, I heard this interesting quote that um, the, per the person uh, who doesn't do a good job and feels awful about it is a person with low self-esteem. A person who does a poor job and think that it's not he is the problem, but everybody else are the problem, are toxic people, okay? And the people who are doing the poor job, but they feel okay about it, are the healthy people, right? So, so self-esteem is a kind of thing when we need to re-identify our successes, right? So our economy is going down right now, right? And uh, some of us will uh, lose jobs. Some of us already lost jobs. And uh, in that situation, we really need to redefine our identity, who we are. So basically the problem of every crisis and every change, you, we lose something like with which, with which our uh, kind of self-esteem is associated. We associate that with our titles, with our uh, income, uh, with our position, with our team, with, with our product. And when we get, when that is uh, took away, when, 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 that's, when that is taken away from us, we feel bad, right? And that's, uh, that's a thing which, uh, uh, which uh, that's, a, that's a really big challenge. So we need to understand that our achievements are not us, okay? Our achievement, our, my achievement is not me. You can get all my achievements from me, but especially I matter without my achievements. So this is a quiet thing which needs to be done. I'm not the best or better than others. No, I'm, I'm just like anybody else. But my achievements uh, are not me. You know, I'm, I, uh, the, the moment that I'm a human, that I can learn something new, the, that I can care for somebody, that I can support somebody is far more important than, you know, that uh, my account savings and the numbers, right? And the 5S, self-actualization. So why these... Why I went through why I went through all these four S's, right? Why? What the reason? The thing is that we cannot design and create unless we have satisfied our psychological or our all our psychological needs. So once we do that, we can start designing. So the fifth S is the design. So I like this design. So this this design what I'm showing you right now. This is this is design which I'm inspired, and I was always inspired. Like in 2008, where there was a first crisis, there was no money, right? I was doing zero uh, every month. Uh, like uh, I saw this design. So this design was created by the guy who built Casio, right? The Casio, uh, the company which uh, the watch company, the calculator company, right? Uh, uh, so this is a device which is used uh, to uh, uh, to 
uh, to smoke the cigarette in Japan. Okay, so he designed this device and he produced this device when there was a crisis. Okay, so in Japan, when there was a crisis, people were really short on money, and uh, they needed a uh, some kind of way to uh, to uh, to smoke the cigarettes. They went uh, and uh, to do it like uh, uh, at maximum as they can because they are expensive, right? So they went to the saunas, they were smoking in the saunas, and uh, they need some kind of way. And uh, also, uh, like uh, when the sauna, there's a lot of water, so the cigarettes get uh, broken, right? So you, uh, so these holders, this small holder on the ring was the answer to that kind of problem. And the Cassia dude, you know, he created that uh, kind of design and he built it his own profit, his own, his first capital on this device, right? And because of this device, he had managed to build up that big company that we know today, right? So when we meet, so the thing is with this 5S thing, so uh, uh, with the 5S thing is that when we meet all our psychological needs, when we know our own boundary, boundaries, when we get the feedback, when we feel safe, when we are hydrated, right? We can start changing the world. We can start designing stuff. We can do our jobs, basically, right? Uh, without it, we will be just somebody who are toxic and trying to prove somebody something or to try to make friends but not make work and stuff that works, you know? So, uh, and uh, there's a lot of stuff which will need to be redesigned, you know? in the next you know year or something so a lot of companies which are going online today and which uh, are going to work and who or which work uh, remotely today they will not come back to the market at all the problem is that a lot of them have no documented pro processes so we have a lot of companies which uh, work for now but will not work in the future because their processes are not just documented so this is where uh, we UXers come, can come in, map it out, uh, make sure that the processes are uh, documented, that they are trained, the people in the company that are trained. So like if you are doing agile, that's not the case. If you are not doing agile uh, and not doing proper documentation at your company, this is an opportunity for you as a designer to design stuff and to build stuff, right? We need to redesign the economy. So right now, the digital is uh, is the king, right? So still, uh, we are short on resources with digital. The next day when everybody came to the internet, uh, YouTube have uh, turned off the HD uh, kind of quality for uh, for the YouTube videos. Same Netflix, you know. Uh, so, so a lot of needs to be redesigned and uh, it's up to us to do that. And we have to develop a new markets, right? So the economy is shrinking and uh, uh, the economy needs us as designers, as entrepreneurs uh, today uh, to kind of redo the stuff, right? To, de to develop new markets, to, uh, to create them, to nourish them, uh, to develop them, right? I, I said develop two times because it's important, right? Uh, so, um, uh, so, but if you cannot design, if you are like, I had this situation many times when I was freelancing, you know, like uh, literally I, I tried to do uh, to do stuff, but I'm not okay. I, I cannot just concentrate on stuff. That's not because of your child. That's not because of your dog. That's not because of your wife. Uh, that's because uh, um, we feel uncertain. Our, our, our uh, needs are not satisfied. Right, so all the basic stuff uh, it is not covered, and uh, that's uh, when we need to, to take care of your of, of ourselves. Write the diary. So literally, uh, if you have uncertainty on yourself, you know, if you feel uncertain, write a diary. Write about your feelings. What you're feeling. So basically, if everybody in the world would write a diary, we will not need a therapist and psychologist. So if it's even that, even if it's worser. Go on and call a psychologist, hire one a psychologist, go through therapy. This is a great opportunity for you to become a better, uh, to be, to become a better at uh, as a human, right? If you if you will have a burnout, uh, 
if you have even a worse situation, you know, call the hotline. If there's a suicidal hotline, if there's a, a hotline uh, for uh, psychological help, use that. That's important. That's better than you know uh, than uh, being angry uh, with your uh, being uh, you know feeling fear and having arguments with your wife. You know. Or uh, you know because uh, you right now are isolated. You are you right now. Uh, you will have you know. There's going to be hard stuff in it. So uh, be calling a hotline is not being a co coward. Co calling a hotline is trying to solve the problem because sometimes we are so deeply uh, under fear that we cannot understand what is going on with us, and we need somebody to come in and ask question us uh, questions and help us. Uh, to kind of uh, get back to our work. And if that all not work, pray. So that also works. You know, I do not know for whom, you know, what is your religion, but that thing really, really works when you have uh, bad situations. The, uh, the, uh, the religions are designed in this way. So uh, the whole thing is that we need to take care of ourselves first. And then we can redesign and recreate the economy because there's going to a lot of stuff will happen. And we will, we will be ready for innovation. We will be ready uh, to, to take on this challenge. And so I don't know, I don't know how, uh, but, but all the UXers are, uh, and all the UX guys uh, who I know, uh, these are the strategic people that really can impact the business, right? So let's just do that. Do it. <laughs> uh, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, very, very good. Uh, let me show. You. So, very amazing talk, and it's very super important talk, actually. I believe, um, guys, if you like it, say you know, send send some love. Uh, and likes, as you can see, Dima, we're having a lot of likes here. Uh, let's see, I'll come back. Any questions? To, to any questions? I'm very happy to. Uh, whoopsie, let's do this and that. And okay, round. Mm. It's good to be round. So, we will take five minutes for questions and then we're going to move back to the, to the next uh, event. Let's see. Okay, Justina, you're amazing. Uh, as you, uh, thank you, Justina. Loved it. Any questions? Um, Jonathan, are you here? Show us your screen. Of course, I'm always here. Uh, let me see you. Uh, you. I cannot see your camera. You cannot see me now. No, I see your Skype. Uh, Sheer says thank you. Uh, Toby, Toby says, "Oopsie, what's this? How would you recommend breaking in to UX without graphic design background? I'm very much in the strategy side." Toby, you got some uh, answers? Yeah, I have some answers. Uh uh, there's a lot of UXers who do not have graphic design background, and especially there's a lot of UXers uh, uh, whose graphic design background uh, uh, kind of uh, is not good for their UX work. Uh, mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, go on and uh, do wireframes, work on workflows, uh, work together with programmers. I think that uh, start working in the product teams and start up with the product teams. That's a really good uh, opportunity for you to go in. Uh, uh, maybe uh, companies like agency-wise companies are, are not the thing where you need to start. Uh, if you are uh, really low on resources, uh, start with QA position. QA position, is, uh, QA engineering is also kind of think a uh, really good thing as, a, as an experience for designers. So this is what I would say. Was the team. Okay, uh, Marmoka Abishai. Uh, says you're a great guy, Dimitri. Oh, that's really nice. Um, do you, do I need to wake up early? Uh, Adnan. Waking, says, uh, this is a really good question. Uh, well done. Uh, waking uh, up put early. Put your camera. Don't uh, share your yes. screen. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, waking up early. Uh, 
why people stay up uh, late when they are working from home and or why they get up early. We need our space, okay? We need our space from our uh, child, from our dog, from our you know wife. This is when uh, we go and work up late, right? And uh, literally, you need to go uh, work early and you, or you need to go there to have the space when you are untouchable, right? So no, nobody can bother you. So either it's early, either it's late, up to you, you know, but you need that time when you are, can, can be untouched by other factors. I want to bring in Jonathan for a question. Jonathan, you have a question? Oops. Yes, I do. Let's see you. Uh, okay. Maybe you can f share your entire screen, because right now we're split screen. Uh, show okay. just your camera, or unshare your screen. Okay, here we go. Now we see you. Okay. So you have now a question for, Dim me. for Dimitri? Yes, I do. Actually, first of all, it was an amazing talk. I loved it. Uh, so thank you so much. And, uh, and then I was thinking that when you mentioned uh, writing a journal, uh, I'm sure so many people are uh, really trying to start writing the journal for a long time and trying to get it, uh, to get it started. So do you have any tips for somebody who is trying to write a journal for, for a long time but actually can't get started? Uh, the thing is that the journal has a workout as well. It's not uh, <laughs> for you to become a writer or a bodybuilder, right? It's a tool for you to stay healthy psychologically. I wrote journals only when I uh, felt panic attacks, as an example. So when you feel like the world is going down, right? <laughs> everything, everything, the economy goes down, COVID, go, you know, viruses takes on, you know, the army goes in. When you feel that you are panicking, that's the time when you pull up the journal and you write. And you are not trying to write a beautiful story with a beautiful narrative. You just write everything that goes in. If it's not a narrative, it's just only words. If it's just, I don't know, pictures or, you know, whatever, numbers, you just write everything. You know, you're writing for yourself and you're writing that out your anxiety. So, and uh, collect the days, right? So you just do like uh, once a day, uh, once once per week, you do that. But you, the, the reason is for you to, after this writing, to feel safe and to feel like, released so you need a relief for you uh, we're doing journalism uh, and we're uh, writing not uh, for for releasing our anxiety that's for what not to become a, 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 a blogger or uh, or a writer so that's the difference so how do you suggest for people to get the habit in the habit ingrained uh, just uh, write on your wall once per week for me to feel safe right this is how I did it you know, as a okay. freelancer, I was constantly feeling uncertain, and when I feel uncertain, I probably will have an argument with my wife. And when I just have an argument with my home people, I understand that it's not the, it's not about them; it's about me. So I and I see like, oh, this week I have skipped the journal, right? Uh, now I see why I'm so insecure and why I'm having an argument with her. As well, as well, that uh, applies uh, when I worked uh, with uh, with the team in the office, right? So if I have a have an, have an argument with my guys, I understand that that's not about my boss or that's not about my manager or uh, my teammate. That's about me. I feel unsafe. That's why and I see that, oh, I skipped my, you know, journals. You know, I skipped my workout. Uh, well, that's my responsibility. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, accept just responsibility. That If you feel unsafe, that's you are the one who is responsible for it. And that will motivate you to write it 